Alrighty, so top tier El Haloof, one already, although it's potentially one painful already. We've got more mediums than you, but that doesn't really matter too much on, on El Haloof. It's, again, still this sort of northwest corner is, ends up being the, the most important part to play through just because the rest of the map is, is fairly easily defendable. So whoever wins over here typically wins the game. Let's go. And then of course, as we always say, 30-60 seconds into the game, you want to kind of check and see what your team is doing. The meta for this map is pretty well established though, so typically most tanks will go to this north area. Which it looks like most of you guys are doing, so that's fantastic. This is a really nice gun. The uh, T30 actually used to have a lot more uh, DPM, um, but they nerfed it like in four consecutive patches. They just kept nerfing the, the fire rate. It used to be much more beasty. The T30 was one of the... Um, there were only three tier 10s when the game was officially released, and the T30 was actually one of them. It was later demoted. Um, you can play through this area right here, especially if these guys are light. Like, see how you have a Panther 88 there? You don't want to stack too many guys on this corner just because it, it becomes a little bit crowded and difficult. Um, so, if they're like, you can play through there probably more effectively than, they, than either of those guys. And then remember, you can sort of prop up the, the back edge of your tank if you want to in order to, to get better shots. Although, you shouldn't really need to per se. Now what you don't want to do, what you want to be really careful is you don't want to stack too deep here. See how this, so this is what I call too deep. This is one deep, this is too deep, you're three deep, right? Too deep can be hit by artillery, so that's something that you have to keep in mind. Oh, you, should mo you should always, you, you should have just sniper zoomed that, you had plenty of time to, to make that shot happen. And then again, remember, it's not so much a, a matter of moving back. You want to move in, and that's what's going to protect you. So your team is stuck pretty far back there. It's not that big of a deal. Um, you need to be careful, again, in the position that you're, you're in. Radio man is down. We can only signal nearby vehicles. Radio man is Um, again, uh, I just want to keep pointing this out. You are still vulnerable to artillery where you're at, just so you guys know. So you almost you don't, so you want to be careful about continuing to poke through here because that T30 was up here. Like this, the trading one for one against the Panther two is okay, but at this point you really don't even want to do that because basically it makes you one shot for the T30. So you you need to be a little bit more conservative. Like when you look at their distribution, right? They've got a lot of tanks right on that other side of you. So that's not necessarily something that you want to poke into, unless you know that you can get a free shot of damage. Like if you see them all shoot something else, or see how see how that big gun is down there now. Now these guys up here are more vulnerable because these guys can't really shoot you. You're still vulnerable to artillery, which is something to keep in mind. I wouldn't even look at those guys down there. Look at those guys up there. Exactly. Like, a lot of times these guys down here, they can't really do a whole lot, which is why coming down here isn't necessarily good. Like, putting one guy down here is, is good because basically he'll proxy spot these guys up here, which will make it easier for the guys behind. But, like, these guys down here, they're not really dealing damage. So when you look at this configuration, right, you've got this T-54E1 to contend with, and that's pretty much it. 
again, you do, you're you're basically stacked too deep right now, so you need to be careful uh, about that as well. You can use this dead Panther 88 body to your advantage though by basically just getting up on it, and you can just sort of move it around how you like and use it as a portable bunker. That's the nice thing about dead too. And like in this particular configuration it's like you need to be the guy that takes charge here like this this 1945 you, you you're like letting these guys get in your way like you need to literally just drive in front of this 1945 get on, onto this panther 88 you know turn it a little bit and then start shooting the i pointed at the screen like you guys can see it but and then start start shooting at the uh the t54 uh, area that way you'll be basically protected. Like right now you're playing a little bit too far back. Again, you have to remember that these guys down here, these guys aren't the guys that are hurting you. Um, and you can basically keep the, help keep those guys honest by playing sort of by where the 1945 is at, right? You, you need to basically just move up into this area right here, like right in front of him, because that'll be the best place for you to both prevent these, keep these guys from being honest over here and then potentially get free shots of those guys over there depending on how they play. Like you're just scrolling a little bit too far back now. You want to be a little bit more forward and you'll be both safer and you will put them in a, in a more of a difficult position. Let's see, there you go. That's very nice target selection, I'm very happy. And then see how you're scrolling back again into the, into the openness. Again, like this is really the best place for you. These guys really can't challenge you. You can keep everything honest here, which is gonna help your team out a lot. Yeah, in this particular case, I wouldn't worry too much about blocking these low tiers. These guys, it's not like you're, these guys are being super efficient, dealing a lot of damage, you know, preventing the enemy team from doing a lot of things. They're, they're not really doing stuff like that. You basically need to do what he's doing, which is pushing that tank forward and then just smoking these guys through it. Oh, you got saved by your E75. And then, see how you're still scrolling up back through like this three deep position? You want to be, you know, one of the things that I try to point out in all of the streams is, is when you're already safe and when you're not and what the difference is. And the difference really is only 10 meters this way, but it's actually a pretty significant difference uh, when it's all said and done. And like stopping here, like, is not good. They're in your base, so you're gonna have to go back. Moving forward is not the answer. There you go. Only one is on cap, which means the other one is coming across here, so you're going to get lit here soon. And you want to go through the back. You never want to go through the front, cross through the front like this. See this guy? is going to cause problems for you. Then once again, you want to get already safe. You want to get as close to this wall as possible. They've only got one on cap, so you can slow play this. You can wait. You've got a almost full health E75 here. So all you gotta do is just kind of hang out here, just let these guys catch up. They're not gonna cap you out unless they put a second guy on cap right now. So you don't need to you don't need to really press this. So it you, you need to have a sense of, of of the timing whether you should be urgent, you sh whether you should have urgency or not. You just want to... Your E75 did not get here in time. 
Well, I suppose that works. Oh, that T-54E1 was able to clip into the back of the E-75. Again, you're not very arty safe, so you want to keep that in mind. Guess you don't have to worry about arty for a little bit. That's good. You are going to want to get out of there because it's all destructible cover. So you want to get closer to where your E-75 is at. The T-54E1 is, is essentially reloading. This I had. Feels like your E75 could have done more there, but. Oh, don't go this way. Why this way? E75 is such a bully tank. The Sayed. Anyhow, um, so you came over this way, which is fine. And again, you know, when you see so much of your team sitting on this corner, you need to make sure that you're in here. Um, and if you've got a bunch of guys that aren't being effective there, like that Panther 88 and the, and the 1945, you, you know, you're, you, you have the biggest gun in the game. You know, you need to, to take charge there and, and actually be a threat. It's particularly once that Panther 88 died and gave you, gave you a nice corpse to hold down behind, that's a huge advantage to you. And especially once their guys push that center ditch, they put three guys in that center ditch, which is completely overkill and a waste. And that actually makes it easier for you, right? Easier for you to bully those guys there. And then one other thing is that when you were coming out this way, you weren't paying attention to when you were coming back to the cap, you weren't paying attention to the T-54E1. If you killed him there, then potentially um, you win just because he doesn't kill your E-75. Uh, so something to keep in mind. It wasn't like you were using that reload for anything. You just weren't really paying attention to, to what he was doing because he was he was certainly very killable for you. Again, I wouldn't have taken that route to go back out through there. I would have taken this inside route. But, you know, like let's say that you started to take that route, but you see him come across here. Because he was lit the whole time, right? Because your guys were sort of chasing him down. He was lit the whole time and he came around here and went in there. So he, you could have just basically sat right there and killed him even and, and been totally safe. Um, but yeah, it's important to reset the cap. I'm glad that you got back. I, I really felt like your E75, if he had just driven straight forward, that he could have done it, but he apparently didn't. Uh, so it's I, I guess it's good that you ended up resetting the cap. But otherwise, I feel like you could have played like this two-line area a lot better. Um, like you don't necessarily need to poke into five guns when you know they have five guns there. But once they move those guns down low, especially the big gun down low, yeah, I'll trade with any of those guys. You know, especially if you got a corpse to hold down over. Like you had all the advantages there, and so you were looking to trade when you didn't really have any advantages. Um, and then when you did have the advantage, you were just like a little bit too timid, um, and that that's sort of a, a problem. Yeah, both teams did about the same. And again, we can look at those guys that were up there with you, right? The uh, Panther II did 460 damage. Oh, the 1945 did 1200 damage. That's not bad for a 1945. But still, that's not, you know, having his, you know, whatever it is, 300 alpha gun is not the same as having a 750 alpha gun on the T30. So. Like there, there's got to be a, a feeding priority, and the feeding priority has to go to the top tier tanks with the biggest guns, and so you you have to make sure that you're you're laying down the law on that two line there. But otherwise, your shooting efficiency was pretty good. Um, I would just be careful about poking into multiple guns and sitting in artillery lanes. Otherwise, um, I thought you did uh, I thought you did pretty well. So, GG, nice try.
All right, so next will be Salentium's uh, T54 lightweight game on Erlenberg, assuming I can get the 915.2 client going properly. Here is not nines. Same cops. More artillery. Okay. There we go. Uh, so you can do a number of things. Oh, that's right. I have the old config. And that's, um, anyways, uh, so on encounter, one of the advantages. drag race outside. Uh, one of the advantages that you have is that you guys all spawn over here, they all spawn over there, so you actually have an advantage to take this side early. So one of the things that you can do is just run this ridge to start. You can play through this bush right here. A lot of it depends on what you see. A lot of times some uh, on encounter mode so they'll send some tanks down here which can potentially counter that type of run. But if you run this ridge then if you get lit you can only just duck down behind the ridge. And if you don't, then you can go and see if you can get into the, the spotting area right there. You can also spot them from up here. A lot of it depends on how fast their team is. And their team is reasonably fast. You do want to look this way, though. This way is the important way. Guys aren't going to appear over there. Guys are going to appear over there. And you're doing more of an active scout at this point, because you're not really in any cover. You do know that Skoda is there, which is good. And there might not be a whole lot else out there. There is a little bit of a ridge back there, um, but you should be high enough that you might not see like low tank, like uh, short tanks. Uh, but you should be able to see pretty much everything else. Unfortunately, most a lot of times, you see how these guys are pretty far back here. They're, if they're up like where this Sturberer is, then you can get shots into where that T-54E1 is at. Nice work on the T-54E1. And that's really what you're looking to do, is you're looking to whittle these guys down, get that free damage on those guys to go across. Ideally, your team is able to get that free damage uh, in this particular case. Now they're going to sort of have some guys back here, I mean, even if it's just light tanks. So you want to be careful about how you play this. Like, you want to be able to light these guys up here. Um, ideally, you have to see what happens. Like, do these super persons actually try to push? You know, how is it that, that they actually play it? And you can move forward a little bit here. See how your Super Pershing is pushing around over there with the T-54 behind him. So this T-54A1 is going to go back around that way. So a lot of times you have to see those types of movements because that's going to give you this avenue to go around through here behind them. See how he's... oh, Pershing. You'll see him. He'll go. There he is! You don't necessarily want to come down over the top of them like this. Again, 
Like the the best thing for you to do, right? See how the pressure is coming from this side. The best thing for you to do is just to give some pressure from a distance over here, right? That way they can't necessarily counter push you right away. Coming down from this side, right? There's no difference between in in terms of the attack angle of this between you and these guys right here. They can keep the all of you guys in front of them. There's no flanking fire, there's no side pressure on them at all. So there's very little uh, uh, pressure for them to actually turn. And then again, you can at this point you can just ignore that SP-1C there. Once again, like he, the, he doesn't have, he's, he's not really relevant to this battle right here. Your guys are pushing into here. Right, so that that guy's not going to be able to do a whole lot. You can come over on this side and get put some pressure, just prevent them from basically backing up here for free. Because right now, what all they're doing is just backing away and keeping all of these guys in front of you, in front of them, and there, there's nobody that's actually punishing them, and that's sort of the problem. See how they've come, they've, they started over here, then they backed up over there, then they backed up over there, and then they backed up over there. Like a lot of times the role of the faster tanks is to put on that sort of flanking pressure. Which, which causes these sides to break. Alright, that's fine. Wasn't totally as efficient as you'd like, but it's not really that big of a deal. Now remember, the cap on encounter is really not that important, especially in the early game. You don't really need to, to counter whoever it is that, that's in the cap. If you really wanted to, um, it might be that, that super version. I don't remember how big the cap, this cap circle is not correct. Um, but I don't remember exactly how big it is. But um, all, remember that to, in order to counter somebody on an encounter cap, all you have to do is be on the cap on the other side, which is pretty much anywhere. So you're not really super worried ever, almost ever, about cap pressure on an, on an encounter match, unless the, the cap is like on completely the other side of the map. Like if this cap was actually over here, then yes, you should be concerned, but this cap being in the middle, eh. You want to just make sure that you still have map control. That's fine, and, and so you have to be careful, like notice what you're doing, see how you're turning away. So one of the things that you have to be careful about is um, how you play the light tank. Uh, sometimes your tank, your, your team does need you to deal damage, but you still, got, you still have a lot of your guys still alive. And so you, you don't necessarily want to go into a pure sniper mode at this point. And then if you're going to spot this side, the best place to spot this side is from over here because you can use those bushes over here to spot these guys before they cross the uh, road. Because if you spot them before they cross the road, then your artillery gets good shots on them and like this stirrer can get shots on them as they, as they come through this area as well. But sitting back here makes it more difficult for everybody and it doesn't actually make it easier for you. Because you want to spot those guys a little bit earlier than you Sort of the same situation though, you can still be in that general area. You have to keep an eye on what's going on over here as well. Like you have side shots on this M103. So like, unless you're for some reason are afraid this AMX CDC is just going to burn in here without anybody noticing him. Like, a lot of times what you should do, right, you're, you're basically in an area where if he pushes, you'll see him. So you should take this time, because you, you, you don't have a shot on that guy. So you should take this time to, to look around the map and see what you, what you can do. Because right now you can get shots on the side of that M103 and you just opted or you just weren't aware that that was a possibility. And you can theoretically push this AMX if you wanted. But again, I, like to me, it would have been better to just spot him from further back and get that free damage instead. Right 
to a job. And then once you sort of counter that, you actually want to pull back here because if they've got people back there, then you don't want to give them easy shots. So they got somebody back there. There he is. And so you actually need to try to break out on one side now, unfortunately. Your A43 is, or sorry, T43 is just kind of hanging out in the middle, which is fine. Like, he's basically the counter cap. Um, you don't need to get real close to these guys in order to spot them. You actually probably want to stay more on the sort of mid-range right here, so where you can use these buildings for cover. Because, like, you, what you don't really need to do is, like, close a gap here. Like, that's not really a, a huge thing. You do want to stay sort of away from that. Moles. Oh, a little, little too high. Good job using the building to cover your escape. But again, you never really wanted to be that close uh, before, so that's just something to keep in mind. You didn't need to be that close to spot those guys or even to get that shot. And again, uh, once again, with this M103 moving south towards the south bridge, it would be very easy for you to play through this area right here to spot them before they come across, which is incredibly important because you don't want to let them cross and then, uh, uh, before, and then spot them. Like that's it's a little bit too much of a slow play at that point. Although it looks like he's gonna dilly dally a little bit, which is fine. Although you do need to be worried about that bulldog crossing through that same area. If you back up a little bit, you'll get a slightly better shot. But yeah, it's, that's not gonna ever be like a super great shot, especially for a, a light tank. The bounces are real. And again, this is why light tank guns are just not that good. Which is why the, the, you know, I always say that one of the problems that I have with the way that most people play light tanks is that they play them like they're really crappy medium tanks. And that, that, that's really to the detriment of the advantages of the tank. The advantages of the light tank is that it's got really good speed, has camo on the move. So you're going back into this area where this bulldog is, um, and you can you can challenge him. You do want to keep him at a little bit of a distance. He's if he's willing to blow his clip before he even. Uh, oh look, he stopped. And you can just kill him. Oh my god, just kill him! Oh my god, just kill him! <laughs> a little bit too... Uh, uh, too delicate for a guy who was, you know, 99% chance of reload. It's going to be difficult for you to challenge this IS. You're actually better off, see where this T-54 is going? You're actually better off circumventing the IS if you can. Uh, not with the JP there as well. You are running out of shells, something to keep in mind. That's the other thing about trying to play this tank like it's an attack dog. This IS is charging you, also something to keep in mind. You don't want to get in a close battle uh, with this IS because you already don't have enough shells to kill the IS. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. You, you're not going to be able to do it by yourself. And yet, you are conveniently ignoring setback. Oh, the HEIS! You're still not going to be able to kill him. Well, maybe you can. If you get a high enough damage roll on the HE. Oh no, the circling is real! I think your uh, party just hit you. I could be wrong on that. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I don't know that that was the uh, best choice for that, but... 
Like whenever you see those guys charging you, uh, you don't necessarily want to sit there and brawl. And that's sort of the, again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about playing the light tank like it's a light tank and not like it's a medium tank because they're really crappy as a medium tank. Uh, the guns aren't really good enough. Uh, even though you're basically two matchmaking tiers above that IS, that, that was going to be a real tough trade for you. Oh, look at you! Look at your sniping bulldog go now. Maybe he's got this. And so, just remember that it's always relatively easy to uh, to run away in the light tank against most tanks. Like. There, there's no reason why you shouldn't have just been like, here comes the IS, alright, see you later. I don't think the bulldog's gonna make it. You need to you need to stop switching dudes. Uh oh. Not, not even aiming. Oh, you totally got him. He's gonna get shot by the M103 now, though. <laughs> Because the M103 is just sitting right there. You can go. Oh, the M103 got him. Yeah, I don't think he knows where the the, the S51 is. Anyway, let's make this. Let's, let's let's speed this up a little bit. Oh my god, stop switching! Alright, I did get that switch you want. You could theoretically win this if you're already... I don't know why their M103 stayed on the cap, but... Um, you could theoretically win this if your already goes in at the same time as the Bulldog, but I'm gonna guess that that's not gonna be what happens, what happens here. And again, remember, like, if you're this Bulldog, you actually don't need to... You actually don't need to uh, attack the M103. All you have to do is uh, sit on the other end of the cap and, and let the uh, let the arty come in, or let the arty get a free shot. But again, I don't think that that bulldog really knew what he was doing. All right. Oh, dang it! I let it go a little. I get. It, I let it go a little bit too long. Anyways, um, so I mean, I thought you did okay. Uh, in terms of, of getting those early lights, you did a good job of damaging that T-54E1 as he crossed. Um, and so that was fine. I think the biggest problem that I had in that early play on the, on the east was that you had an opportunity to prevent those guys from moving back easily um, to actually get a turret break, make it easier for your guys. And instead what you did was that you stayed on the front with all of your guys and you still didn't get any shots on the, on the enemy team, but you didn't put... You didn't put them in a in a difficult spot, and and I think that's sort of the what you want to be able to do, particularly in these more mobile tanks. Again, your gun is not the best part of the tank, and that's sort of the problem that a lot of people who play light tanks have is that they go, oh, I want to use a gun, I want to use a gun, I want to use a gun. Really, you know, the gun is is like the third best thing on the, on any light tank. Uh, it's very rarely the the best thing on the light tank, um, and so you have to sort of keep that in, in mind that. There's a lot of opportunities for you to create pressure situations for your team to make it easier for your team to actually make certain pushes. Like again, I'll, I'll highlight where when that uh, uh, when those three tanks, the T-54, E-1, Indian, and Pershing or something like that, it was one of the Pat Care was over here. Um, 
and so that's something that 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 you could have helped out on by just literally moving to this outside here not making it so that they can't just back up really easily without you shooting them in the rear and then that's where your gun actually is pretty effective again you don't necessarily want to be right up on them unless your guys are pushing in really aggressively because otherwise they can counter push uh, but again that's the strength of the light tank is that you are more mobile than everyone else you have more speed than everyone else you have more agility than everybody else you have more camo than everybody else what is not the strength of the uh, the the light tank is that you have less health than everyone else you have less uh, alpha than everyone else you typically have at least the same gun control as everyone else but that's not necessarily bad so the way that i've always looked at light tanks is that they're they're undergunned they're under armored they're under health right so don't try to play into anything which requires armor health or the gun um you want to play into situations that actually play to your advantage which is basically range and harry um so like for example crossing over here I, I i feel like that was a good move get some shots on that jp as soon as you see that is coming just go ahead and bail out right that is is not going to be able to to shoot you on as he tries to chase you down there on, on the move especially when he's shooting at you you're not really that super worried about him but it's one of those situations where once he gets to you then you're pretty much done like you don't have a real good solution for that again because it, you're in a light tank against a heavy tank even though he's a lower tier heavy tank um or a bottom tier heavy tank and you're a top tier light tank that's still not a very good matchup for you because he's still gonna hurt you um and so if it's it was one of those things where if that guy was isoed like if that is was out here then certainly yeah you can go after him right but given his position uh where he was at and that most of their team was still on this west side of the map that uh, i feel like that was that was a flaw all right so if you look at the stats Yeah, you did not get a whole lot out of your team. They didn't really, their team didn't really do a whole lot better either, but what are you going to do? And again, you did do a lot of damage, and I'm happy that you did a lot of damage, but I just want to point out that even if you used every single shell, right, you you were going to run out of ammo before their, their team ran out of health. And so... One of the things that you need to keep in mind is that what that means is that for you to have a, a realistic chance to win this game, that you needed to have your teammates more involved in some way, right? And sometimes, you know, it's one of those things, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You can lead your team to free damage, but they don't have to collect it. Uh, but, but you do have to try, uh, in my opinion. You have to try to, to to create situations for your team because if you don't do it you know the the other light tanks not isn't going to but i, I mean I, I thought overall you played pretty well so not 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 too bad gg nice try All right, and the next one is back to 916, Midnight Guns, IS-2 on Redshire. Yeah, especially in a light tank, a lot of times when you're going to get, when you know that you're going to get outmatched by something, or when you know that, you know, even with that IS, like if you really wanted to trade with that IS, you could, and you could probably win, but he's going to hurt you, 
You know what I mean? Like it's going to be an inordinate amount of pain to kill an IS where that you could play from a longer range and, and trade with better. And so in those situations, particularly in light tanks, just use that mobility and just squirt away. Alrighty, so bottom tier, although there's only two tier 9, so that's good. Um, got slightly lighter comp. Again, I, I still don't feel that playing this zero line is, is pretty effective for either team. Again, this area right here is, is entertaining to play in, but whoever wins over here then, um, you want to make sure that you don't push across these big open plains because that's where you get wrecked. Um, it's pretty easy to defend from anybody attacking from this area, so therefore it's not really that fruitful to, to send anybody there. Usually my feeling is that the game is won on the 1 and 3 lines, and the 1 and 3 lines have a lot of synergy where they can help each other out a lot. And the IS-2 is not going to be that great on the 3 line, it might be okay on the 1 line, a lot of it depends on what they send. But see how your guys aren't sending anybody to that 3 line? There needs to be somebody there, because otherwise these guys on the 1 line are just going to get, if they try to advance, they're just going to get shot from these guys over here. So just something to keep in mind. You'll see a lot of tanks, uh, a lot of players camp back here. Uh, this was a very, very, very old meta um, a couple of years ago before they changed a lot of Redshire. Uh, players camp back there, players camp back there. It is, it is absolutely useless in the early game. And then see where these guys have stopped on this on this ridge here. Interestingly enough, this isn't actually the best place to stop. The best place to stop is actually up here. Uh, you get much better cover, and you force these guys to sit back there in the open. What what happens otherwise is that these guys end up sitting over here, their guys end up sitting over here, and both guys get hit by artillery. Um, you know, ideally, you want to make sure make it so that only your opponent gets hit by artillery, not you. So pushing up through this area that you're pushing up through is, is actually a, a good route to take uh, IMO. You just need to keep an eye on whether they push like the SCI or the Type 4 up through there. Because that will be a problem for you. You don't necessarily... You don't necessarily want to play on this side because, again, this is... Excuse me, one second. This is a, a map where there's a, a large amount of synergy between this three line here and this one line here. So this position that you're at is, is actually technically good if these guys are playing the three line, but they're not. They're playing really far back. So you're not going to get any eyes to anything over here, so there's not going to be anything for you to shoot. You need to have your eyes down here because you need to prevent like this this guy from, from getting shot. And it's one of those things, and it's the same thing that I always say my criticism for the way that people play artillery is that when you watch people play artillery they're always aimed in someplace where they're not going to get spots like you'll have an artillery aiming back here but there's no tanks that are going to spot back here and you're like why why are you looking back there you're not getting any shots and it's the same thing for for second line tanks like you're not getting any spots over here so there's very little reason for you to hang out waiting for shots that aren't going to come whereas this guy is going to try to approach eventually over here although you guys moved up so all right that's fine that's one of the things that you can do. These guys have moved up through here. You can actually move up through here on this side, and then you can spot through here, depending on your view range, which isn't very good in the IS. You're, you're running Binox, but uh, that's not going to be really useful in this particular situation. Um, you could spot through here if you have better better view range, or if they have bad camo. So the problem is right now is that their team doesn't really have any good position on this side, but but you're not really in any position to, to deal damage. I wouldn't worry too much about the Tiger 2. Again, once you get over through this area, see how that, that type is lit over here? You can shoot through this area right here into these guys. Like that Tiger 2 is below the horizon still, so he's not going to be as good of a target. And then as you move forward here, this becomes more dangerous. You actually want to just leave the Tiger 2 back there. Again, like I was saying, the, the advantage of having this guy sitting back here and lit is that artillery can hit him. So you just want to allow that to, to play out. You don't need to push out here where these guys from the side can shoot you, artillery can shoot you, and the Tiger 2 can shoot you, anything behind the Tiger 2 can shoot you. You want to be a little bit uh, more cautious in, in that sense. 
This is not a, a super awesome shot that you're going for. Oh man. Is that, is that an AT shell? <laughs> if if it was an AT shell, you're you're shooting for side turret there, which is fantastic. That's good. If, since you fired an HE in the first shot, you didn't really even need to aim, you just needed to hit him. That is a complete hope shot. And again, remember, it's these guys over here that, that, that are the problem for you. It's not really the Tiger 2, it's one of those things. Understand what it is that you're afraid of and why this position is bad. But again, I just want to point out that, especially now that you guys are actually pushing down this three line, you don't need, this Tiger 2 wasn't threatening your team. This Tiger 2 wasn't about to make a move that broke this side. So there wasn't a whole lot of reason for you to push him. He was lit. He's in a place where Artie can shoot him. These guys are starting to get into a position where they can shoot him. And this is what we, what we talk about when we talk about a one three line synergy, is that as these guys move down here, the one line gets really good shots on these guys out here right this type 64 these type 64s and all these guys that are sitting back there and similarly these guys on the three line get better shots on these guys over here and that's that's why they're they're synergy and you want to have you want to be able to move down both of those lines at once which is why moving down to where you did was not necessarily good But your guys are pushing in through here now, which is good. Their artillery is lit, so I hope you guys get that down. And then again, the weakness of this side is that no matter who wins, um, if they decide to continue over here, they're going to have to push through this open area. So see, now this super Pershing area, this camper is like, oh yeah, now's my time to shine. Um, that's when this position becomes relevant, once these guys actually start to push in there, because then you can just farm them as they cross through these big open areas. You're not going to really get any shots here. You need to start heading back to where the super person is at. You're not really going to challenge the, the Oni from this position. Just let your faster tanks do it. Like He's going to be dead way before you get there, most likely. Because all you're doing is basically wasting time. You like This guy, you need to get over to where this guy is at. Especially now that the artillery is down, because that means there's no uh, indirect fire. And in in true camper fashion, the super person is like, "It's time to run." Once this this is now is the time when this position actually becomes relevant, and he's like, "Run away!" Um, which is why you need to be over there so that you can spot and shoot these guys as they come in. And again, it's such a damage farm, such a damage farm, especially if they don't have uh, indirect fire. Unfortunately, you did waste a little bit of time there. Again, that's just a hope shot. That's fine taking that, uh, but even if you hit him, I mean, short of ammo racking him, you weren't going to be able to, to stop him. Unfortunately, your super pershing has completed the the full runaway well that works hopefully your 53 55 lives and then now unfortunately what you have to do is you have to let this oho get up underneath you so you want you still want to play where that super pushing was you don't want to play the ridge the ridge is where you get shot you want to play underneath over here, like where the basically where this dead corpse is. Basically, where your super pershing was camped for the entire game until it became relevant. That's where you want to be. Like you need to be more concerned about this oho and less concerned about sniping at 500 meters. Like especially once once you see him fire like that, you need to get your shot of free damage. Like you're you're shooting at, at guys that. I mean, even if you did have a lane to, that was going to be a real, real tough haul. There's a T-32 in the back. It's fine. Let, uh, let the Oho fixate on you if that's what he wants to do. 
You can shoot the T-32 if you like. You don't need to shoot the Oho. There you go. But you do need to occupy the Oho, right? You need to you need to be a little bit of a threat. See how he's fixated on you? Concentrate a little bit less on that guy. I would move over into this side of the hill a little bit. Your T-43 is doing the, the right thing. He's close enough. You're, you're a little bit in a position where you're getting shot from out there. Which is why you wouldn't need to go down there a little bit. Uh, your T-43 is coming off of the Oho a little bit. You got him. Good job, T-43. Oh, that was like a reaction shot for some reason. He shot you and so you shot back. You probably just could have waited there. Uh, just, just wait. Uh, aim. And then what you need to do is you need to go back along this hill now. Because you need to control this this side of the hill there. You don't... So one of the things you want to avoid doing in any tank at any time is to sit on top of hills. Like sitting on top of hills is almost never, never good for you. Um, technically I guess if you're a light tank it can occasionally be good for you. But in, in no other situation is Is that is that particularly useful? Is that HE again? <laughs> oh my god! To shoot AP, my man. Row. Row. Which is why, again, you don't want to play at the top of the hill. Um, you could be in these valleys, you could be anywhere else where you can get shot. Because what you want to do is you want to get these guys before they get up underneath you here. This STI is going to push that moots, you don't have any protection there, you're not going to really be able to stop them anyways. You guys actually have a reasonable encapsulate, you're just not really... Oh! Got, gotta take a chance! No, you don't need to, you don't need to auto in that. There you go, good job. Unfortunately, beating that other Type 4 is gonna be difficult. Because your T-43 is now dead. Oh no, he's still alive. Oh, now he's dead. <laughs> yeah, their 9's just out, so I have a little bit too much health left. So now would be a good time to load APCR. Well, that auto aim was really unnecessary. And again, see how these guys are coming across an open plane? That's what you want. These guys, it'll take them a while. You're not going to be able to beat those guys anyways. What you really want to do, like let, let's say that, let's say that both of these guys are one shot. What you really want to do is you want to get this T-34 down with the next shot as he's sort of coming across here. This T-28 prototype. Then you reload, get the T-28 prototype, and then you leave, right? And you get away because you're faster than their tanks, but in this particular scenario, the timing isn't going to work out anyways, but that's what you should be doing. You're, you shouldn't be thinking, oh, you know what I should do? I should go take on the slower tanks and uh, that have more armor and more health. You want you want to take out the easy tanks. Um, and th this situation, it's not quite the same because these guys are have more health than you anyways. But whenever you're surrounded like this, you're being attacked from flanks, the best thing to do is to attack through the weakest flank, right? Attack out, get out of the, get out of the trap, right? get everything back in front of you or behind you as it were again and then you can deal with it what you don't want to do is to slowly let that noose tighten around your neck slowly 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 and then be like oh i'm stuck right so whenever you're encapsulated you always want to think about that you always want to 
figure out how, okay, what's the easiest path for me to bust out here? And in this particular case, the easiest path is not to go through the STI in the, in the Type 4. Alrighty. Um, so it was an interesting game. Um, so you came over to this one line, which is fine. You had a bunch of campers back here, which is always gonna gonna hurt you. Which is why whenever you have guys on the one line, you all you always need them on the three line. And you'll notice how effective that was once these guys moved forward. How effective it was to play the one and the three line at the same time. That allowed you guys to clean up this side pretty easily. It just took you too long to do it. Um, in the meantime, your guys that went over here all died, which is fine. It's not that big of a deal. Like I said many, many times, this is really not that relevant of a, of a spot, especially once you got their artillery down. Where that super pressure is, you can basically decimate, decimate those tanks on the way in. Uh, get all sorts of free damage, get your artillery to get shots. Um, other people can basically just sit on this ridge and get shots on those guys based off of your spots. You can actually put guys back here to get shots into those areas as well. Um, and so it's it's just a it's just a devastating devastating way to try to push through here is to continue to do this and so that's why i always say whenever you play red Shire, if you come over here that's fine i don't think that it's important but if you come over here and, and you want to win it that's cool i'm down with that but once you win this area don't continue pushing through don't continue pushing through that side because if the if the enemy has any brains at all they are going to just straight wreck you the that's the way the map was designed what you really need to do is just come back and then come through the middle and then crush the rest um, because that's much 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 safer so just something to keep in mind Alrighty, so if we look at the stats. Your T-43 did a good job. You did a pretty good job too. I mean, as as tier 7 tanks in a tier 9 game, it can be a little bit difficult because you, you tend to just try to be more opportunistic in terms of your uh, what damage you can do. Um, and I think a lot of... of what you need to work on um, in a sense uh, not that i feel like you played poorly I, I i feel like you again you played pretty well you played better than your tier nines um, but the problem is the sort of micro positioning in terms of how as a bottom tier tank do you put the enemy into difficult positions or when or where can you can you do that and you know identifying those situations where you do have a mismatch like your t43 right he basically soloed that type four um, and he basically did it by taking advantage of the fact that the Type 4 doesn't have good mobility and it has weak sides that he can get to. Um, and so that's good for, for him, right? To identify those types of mismatches and, and be able to take advantage of it, particularly once their artillery went down because then they have no indirect support on that side. And so you guys should have been theoretically able to, to crush those guys as they came in. But unfortunately, you didn't have your firepower in the right spot. And so even if your tank was in the right spot, like let's say you were in the spot where that super pressure was and that, that ran away, it's still going to be difficult for you because you're not going to be able to deal a lot of direct fire, direct damage there in a tier 7 tank to, to a lot of those tanks frontally, and your team wasn't really in a position to deal damage from, the, from where they were at. Um, now, for example, if... Oh, there we go. If that super pressing stayed in that position right there right and so essentially what happened was that they sent some of their guys around this way and they sent some of the guys over the top this way so let's say the super pressing stayed there let's say the super pressing was in a platoon with you and you told him hey just stay there and spot those guys as they come in right so he can play that ridge right there and basically be safe from from direct uh, fire and just sort of poke over and spot those guys and then what you all you really need to do is you just need to hang out in this area right here and you can get shots into these guys as they cross into this into this area you can get free side shots as they cross cross then they can't really move forward there right and the more that they sit back there you still got artillery and they don't and and then you can just sort of pick away at them if they don't decide that they're going to be brave enough to actually push across that area but sort of uh, the problem that you had was that super person decided to vacate that area which which you often see with campers a lot of times campers will leave the area that they camp in just as it's about to become re relevant because they don't like the conflict or, or whatever the reason is um 
and so that's sort of the the problem with with those types of, of positions where you see players in those types of positions which is why like for example you in your is2 you went down here after their what was it the oni when you didn't really have to right and you wasted some time driving you drove across this little bridge and then dri dri driving down here you wasted some time when your mediums were all we're going to kill that guy before you even had a chance and so you really needed to start getting into position to catch these guys that were coming in oh i just realized that the firefox has probably blocked most of that dun, dun, dun. Hang on, I'll I'll I'll, rest I'll restate that. Just give me a second. Um, you're you, I mean, you didn't have very good shooting efficiency, but the the shots that you had weren't very awesome for the most part. Uh, it looked like you fired HE a couple of times, which I'm not entirely sure that you needed to do. Uh, a lot of times, you'd rather go with the guaranteed damage. Um, when you can get it. Like if you had to fire at that Oni frontally, for example, or the Oho frontally, okay, sure, you know, you can load HE if you've got no other shots, but short of that, I don't think that's uh, super necessary. Alrighty, uh, so otherwise I thought you, you did fine on shooting. So back to what I was... Bring on that math, and I can bring this back up. Um, so what I was saying is that, let's say that that super pershing was still in this area right here. Man, now the chat is kind of blocking this. Man, i got to move the mini-map again. Anyways, uh, so you know where that super pershing is, sort of where the mouse is moving on the map, where, the, where this STI is now. Um, so if he stays in that position, he can spot these guys coming in, right? They sent guys around through this corner and they sent some guys over top over here. And so all you have to do is just kind of hang out in this area right here and you can get shots into the side of them, right? You can get all this free damage as they try to push across. And a lot of times what will happen is that these guys that are trying to cross here will stop and they'll back up, right? And that's what creates more shots for your artillery and things like that because they don't actually move forward. And if they are brave enough to continue moving forward, then you continue to get shots. And especially if you just start, because you guys already controlled this side, right? They It wasn't until later that they actually came through, the, the STI came back through around on this side. And so when you control this side, right, even once they get up underneath you here, you can start playing down through here and get shots up at them. So that that's why this position is incredibly important in terms of spotting once the side is loses, because this position right here can spot all these guys coming in and then everyone else, it, it's very, relatively easy for everyone else to deal damage. Alrighty, um, but GG, I, it's 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 tough to play a bottom tier heavy in a in a game like this, uh, and I uh, I thought you did a good job though, so nice try. <laughs>